guys, I'm Bethany. I'm here. <laughs> Dalton is not sick physically. I am not. This week. <laughs> I'm, I'm mentally little... <laughs> ill, but we've already known that for he a is while. A little bit, uh, yes, struggling. But that is okay. We will. I live on the struggle bus. What are you talking muddle about? Muddle through. Guys, this is the season finale. Is it really? Season 10 is coming to a close. Finally. This that was, week. That was a finale joke. <laughs> oh. It was a good, good one. Good one. Didn't. Okay. Um, I'm on fire. I'll warm up in a minute, people. So if you would like to continue to hang out with us through the off season, you can follow us on Instagram, LFTM underscore podcast. Do we post there. on Instagram that often? No, I, y'all, I've been so... It, there's just been a lot going on the there past few months. Been. Like, just a lot. And unfortunately, social media, I haven't even posted on my own Instagram. Oh, I'm not even on Instagram you, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it's just, there's just been a lot going on. Um, and so that has been one thing that has unfortunately fallen by the wayside, but I'm hoping to have a little more margin and I can hang out with you guys there in the off season more. So follow us there if you want to. Um, girls, if you want to hang out on Facebook and get to know some fellow Looking for the Middle listeners, LFTM Community is the Facebook group for that. And if you would like to be on our mailing list, Head over to our website, lookingforthemiddle.com, and you can sign up there to be part of our list. Is that all the housekeeping things? It's the three that I normally hold up. Okay. Are you ready for my question of the day? Not really. I'm kind of the terrified of it. The last one of the season? It's just random. It's not necessarily hard. Oh. Well, you went, ooh, I have a question, and I yeah. always get scared when you it's do just that. It's totally random. Okay, so what would be Black the most... Huh? You said random. I just said something random. Well, that doesn't quite work for this. What would be the most terrifying animal... If animals could talk. Snakes. If they could talk? That would be the most terrifying thing. Yeah, because I mean, it I'm didn't work out well for Eve, but... Most terrified of snakes in general, so... Well, yeah, but I don't feel like snakes would have terrifying voices. Like, I'm... Ter- I, like, um, sharks are super scary, but I feel like if they talked, they wouldn't be that scary to me. Have you not seen The Jungle Book? Yeah, I have. That snake is creepy. Yeah, but the monkey's creepier. No. King, the king, whatever his name king is. King Louis is not king creepy. Louis. Yeah, he is. He is like off his rocker. I mean, he is off his rocker, but he's just, he's crazy. He's, yeah. he's the type of crazy he's terrifying. that's fun. No, he's just. He's fun crazy. No, he's not. Snake's creepy. Well, yes. I just don't think that'd be the most. Especially with the little tongue thing. The th- <laughs> <laughs> That made me think of move on. <laughs> Dragon. I don't do that tongue thing. Okay, People, well, I'm not going to like... Poor Bethany has to deal with all of my movie and TV references <laughs> constantly. I don't even get half of them. He's like, yeah, you know, from such and such. And I'm like, no, sorry. I, I am a movie person. He is. Well, and I am too. I just don't remember them. I, I go to way more movies than you do. Oh, way more. I just don't remember them. I am... Well, I'm mostly just quoting Disney movies and children's movies. That's true. Like, like The Emperor's New Groove oh, is my a fantastic jam. movie. Jam. I love that movie. I watch it probably once a month. Oh, do you really? Oh, I haven't seen it in years, it. but it's really funny. I mean, I haven't seen it in like a week. <laughs> when I was down with the flu, that's what I watch when I'm down with the that's flu. That's hilarious. Um, I'm absolutely filibustering because I don't know the answer to my own question. Why'd you um, ask it? I just thought it was a fun question. I hadn't really thought of an answer to it. I think if animals could talk... What would be the most terrifying one? I feel like uh, some sort of bear or maybe a lion. Because I feel like a lion would be this like deep, Lions are pretty rumbling lazy. voice. Yeah, but if it came up and talked, I feel like it would be menacing. No? I, no. Not so much? A bear? Is that better? What type of bear? Grizzly bear. <laughs> Sorry. I just... Well, I, was wait, I, was, I was waiting for you what to say What type false. of bear is best? <laughs> Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Oh, we are off to a great start. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say grizzly bear then. Have you ever seen a grizzly bear? In person? Yeah. I don't know, maybe at a zoo. Probably not, though. Yeah, but zoos don't really count. Then no, I have not. Seeing things in the wild is a completely different story. That is true. Like the coyote that I run into sometimes. That thing scares me. Yeah, just stay out of the woods. That's He's like, I was here first. Like telling me not to drink coffee. That's just not happening. <laughs> That's true. I spent well, all of yesterday in the woods. I know you did. You showed me all of the And it was the glorious. Of the, the I didn't deer, show you a deers. video of the armadillo. That's true. You didn't. Just the deers. I'll show you the video of the armadillo later. Y'all, be jealous of me. I get to watch trail cam videos People. of People. animals. Do you know how exciting it Pre-hunted is animals. To, to put in <laughs> all of this work to find deer and then have a camera tell me i did my job right i didn't think of it that way that's fair that that's makes me feel valid, so good yeah that's fair 
something is going well in life, it makes me happy. All right? You got to have those moments. They're very few and far between. <laughs> okay, guys. Let's not get too off into the weeds here. All right. That's what we do. I know it is, but we have a lot to cover today. Do we? We were going to like just randomly pick numbers and draw your you guys' questions and answer them, and this is going to be like a rapid-fire episode, but Dalton was like so distracted. He was looking at other stuff. I just went through and was like, ooh, here are the questions I want to answer. So... I, by the way, people, I have no idea what these questions are. No, he does not. And I'm asking all of them, which means you have to answer them first. So That is not fair. Get ready. First question. How do you transition back to being just friends? You dated, didn't work out. Now you're going back to being just friends. The, and she fills out her question saying, we hang out in the same friend group, so we still see each other pretty often. Um, but they agreed to not text each other outside of a group chat or hang out just because it doesn't seem awkward. But... Have you ever done that of like transition back into it? Um, well, first of all, it sounds like you already have. That's fair. Person that's uh-huh. asking that question. But you set boundaries. Which I think is smart. But so I'm, like, I get your question, but I think you're actually doing something that's really healthy. I, I, it sounds I, yeah, I like think... they've set boundaries. Mm-hmm. They've clearly communicated about what's healthy and what's not yep. healthy, but they still spend time together. Um, to answer your question, just do that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is I really think you've done a good job of this from what you've spelled out here in the question with those things. Because setting boundaries and communicating about it beforehand is what I would normally tell people. The only other thing I would tell you, and probably this is what you're feeling, is even if it ended on the best of terms, you were like, Ugh, this is, it, like we're just better as friends. There's going to be a period of time where it's just kind of awkward. And that's okay. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean you haven't done what you should. It doesn't mean you should do something different. It may just mean give it a little time. And so even if you have those boundaries, if for a time you need to step, take a step back even more and then just kind of go back to being friends, I think that's okay. But it sounds like, yeah, you have set up some healthy boundaries and clearly communicated what they are amongst yourselves. So I would, yeah, I would second that. Just uh, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it's pretty much what my advice is going to be. Talk about it. Yeah. Like when when you break up, there's always going to be that awkward tension. Mm-hmm. Um, so communicate about it. Hey, don't think it's wise that we continue to talk the way we were when we were, you know, dating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, there's a transition that has occurred. Yeah. So if you tell the other person and clearly communicate, hey, these are my expectations and the boundaries that I think we need to set, mm-hmm. I think you're good. I do too. It's going to be hard. It is. Especially if, like, let's say in this scenario, you agree with the reason for ending it. You agree that it's not working out, but maybe you still have feelings or have more feelings. You may just need a break Mm -hmm. to let that just abate. And I think you'll find it's a lot easier than to just go back into friendliness. The the only other thing that I would say is, because they had mentioned we don't hang out outside of our friend group. Uh Uh-huh. Um, it would be wise how you spend time in the friend group. Mm-hmm. Like if you find yourself continuously gravitating towards that oh. person, you're it, not really yeah. setting healthy boundaries at that That's point. That's true. And it, it's easy for that to kind of be, uh, I don't want to say security blanket, but there's a comfort in that. There's mm-hmm. a familiarity to it that it's easy to fall back into those things. I think the, so, yeah. the pendulum here would be either... Uh, you never talk to that person when you're around them in a group. Yeah. Or you only talk to that person and you kind of need to look for the middle. Oh, uh-huh. you got that in there early today. I got that in quick. Look at you. <laughs> I don't even think I've done that the last few weeks. Been oh, off my we game. Haven't. The you sickness have been has off killed your game. me. Yeah, it's okay. We'll let it slide. This is the comeback for the season <laughs> finale. Um, good question. Okay, this is another good one and I doubt you have an answer, but I have a quick one, so I just want to throw it out here real quick. She says Why do you just doubt one... that I have an answer. Why are you doubting me? Okay, you answer first. Just wondering if you guys have heard of and or joined the Christian dating app called Higher Bond. I'm a female listener and was curious if you have any reviews on the app. Dalton? Uh, I can still answer the question okay. even though I've never heard of it. <laughs> what's, what's your <laughs> thoughts on that app? Uh, you see, I have no idea, but that's an answer. It's not a helpful one. But. No, you didn't say <laughs> you can't give a helpful answer. Yes. Okay, so I will just say I got an email from them forever ago at this point um and they were like hey we want to give you like six months free come try this out and so i was like okay so i did and their whole thing is like they send you like four or five matches a day let's say and you can message them but you can only message one person each day 
so that like their idea is like they don't you know there's overwhelm with dating apps and so they're creating it so that it's like you can focus on just you know one person at a time um but i think with so the concept's fine i never talked to anybody on it um but with a lot of the christian based apps you run into the same thing of there just aren't very many people on there so i don't have anything bad to say about it um but i also don't have anything like really good to say about it other than maybe go for it if you want to but don't have high expectations really quickly because there just aren't a lot of people on there yeah what she said (laughs) that's also an answer (laughs) that is true that's two answers that i had to that question (laughs) okay so let's throw out another one here we're moving through these quickly we're going to cover a lot of ground um there are several questions kind of in this vein the vein being shyness this particular one says there's a guy in my community i'm interested in getting to know he's shy I'm shy. I always catch him staring at me and hanging around, but he doesn't ever say hi. And I don't really know what to do. And so th- that's one. I saw another one down here. The girl saying, I'm really shy. How do, how do I get a guy to notice me without like not being myself? You know, like it's easier when you're like a super outgoing bubbly girl to just be yourself and get people to notice you because you're talking all the time. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on that? If you're from a guy, let's go from a guy's perspective and a girl's perspective. Well, hold on. Let me come from a, pastoral perspective for just well okay that's fine too and this is not me saying don't be shy because i get it mm-hmm. uh, i've said this many time on the podcast i mean people look at me and go you're extroverted but i'm really not because mm-hmm. <laughs> i went to a wedding uh, this past weekend you were there uh-huh. um and the guy i was sitting next to asked me if i was staying for the reception yeah I was like, nah i'm gone <laughs> he goes why do you always leave early from social gatherings i went i'm a social introvert <laughs> yeah. i hit a limit and i'm done he yeah goes, oh <laughs> makes sense yeah so, I mean, I kind of get the yeah. shyness thing. When I hit my wall, I hit my wall mm-hmm. hard. And I, I get really quiet. And I even get bashful, which a lot of people are surprised yeah. by. But I won't talk. Well, it's exhausting to exert the effort of But I also will then. say, I don't know I don't know how to take this. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I get around lovely women sometimes, I do get bashful. Okay. I don't know why, but I do. Like an intimidation thing or an I'm not sure what to say thing? I just said I don't know why. That's true. I shouldn't ask questions. I don't know why. Okay. Um, so I get the shy, bashful thing. But at some point, there's a line between being shy uh-huh. and having a fear of man. Mm. And you have to be it's really careful towing that line because it could be one of those things that you're you're so fearful of rejection, you're so fearful of what people will think of you, uh, or you're so fearful of putting yourself out there that it becomes fear of man. And Which, you just need to be really cautious with that. Yes. Now, just for the sake of, because I think it could get easily twisted, giving our subject matter. So to define fear of man, just to be super clear, he's not saying fear of men as in like, I'm super shy around men as Correct. a girl. Fear of man as opposed to the fear of God is like what mm-hmm. the term, the terminology would be in that. Basically saying you're placing too high of a v- view or too high of a priority on what people think of you. And I can define this term because I have a, uh, a lot of experience having to fight with this because mm-hmm. it's something that I am, I'm very much a people pleaser and I put way too much stock in what people think of me, what they think of what I'm saying and what I'm doing and what about this and what about that. And you can just ask Dalton. I, I'm constantly saying, oh, well, should I say this or should I say that? Or what should this email subject be? Or what should that be? He's like, does it really matter? So when he's saying fear of man, he's meaning you're letting t- what people think of you and how you might be perceived have too much of an impact on then how you go about life. Well, and that's a really important clarification because the fear of man can go one of two ways. Mm-hmm. Either it causes you to shut down and never say a word, which I know some people that are like that, or you go on your end of the spectrum where it makes you want to do everything for everyone and you never say no and you stretch yourself so thin that you're about to explode. That is very um, true. <laughs> So you, you kind of have to be careful with both of those things. Um, so I, that's just the, the first part. Check your heart and make sure it's not just a fear of man. Uh, but if it is genuine shyness, like your your quiet personality, you're bashful in social settings, um, you have a lot of challenges mm-hmm. that are there, and that's just the way that you're hardwired. Uh, on the first part of the question, it was more towards you've seen this guy looking at you and you enjoy kind of being around in the same things, right? That mm-hmm. was Yeah, and she's saying they're both really shy. So he seems like he's interested, but she's not sure he would make a move even if he was. So at some point, someone's going to have to say something. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no way around it. 
if yes. you're just two shy people and you sit in a room and stare at one another long enough, that's not going to work because mm-hmm. words have to come into play here. So at some point, you're going to have to probably say something to this guy. Yes. Which is intimidating. I know and understand that. Or at least initiate a conversation. However brief it is, to where this person is able to see, oh, they actually went out of their comfort zone, out of their way, to come say something to me. Whether it was a short conversation, a compliment, or even just an upfront, hey, I've noticed we kind of like spending time together. What's up with that? Um, (laughs) Yeah. I, I... the listeners probably get so irritated with me. I'll be teetering towards a good sentence, and I'll just hit something stupid. You're like, nope. Um, you're going to have to say something at some point or initiate. Now, one of the other things you could do if you're a shy person, and that's a shy person, I wonder if you have a mutual friend that might be not as shy. I uh, Yes. I Community people. As you were talking, I was thinking through two potential like avenues for this. One was use your friends shamelessly. I don't even feel bad about it. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, put your community to good use. Okay, so, d- yes. D- d- don't let your friends go, hey, would you like to go out with them? Using a surrogate ask her outer, not good. You can use them to gauge interest and find out if your approaching them would be well received, but not as the actual asking out. Yeah. And then the second thing I was thinking is kind of in the same way of... Don't use your friend as the actual asking out, but you can use them to kind of break the ice and gauge interest. I am okay with a text message doing the same thing as that in this instance. I would not say use it instead of approaching them to ask them out, but I think it's fine to approach it, especially if like they might be do better with having some time to process and think through and then have a conversation. Just putting that out there of like, Hey, I'd like to talk to you about something or, um, I know this needs an in-person conversation, but like, I really enjoy hanging out with you. I think we have a good time. We'd love to talk to you about it more. Maybe get to know you better. Let's talk about it such and such. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it brings up an important point and something that we've uh, hinted at multiple times throughout the course of this show when I've been on here, and I'm sure you guys yeah. did it before I came on here. Uh, dating forces you out of your comfort zone, whether mm-hmm. you like it or not. Yeah. For guys, it forces you to initiate. It forces you to... Uh, start the process of leading, not leading itself, start the process of leading um, and make some big, bold risks that are good, Mm -hmm. but it takes you out of your comfort zone. Same thing is true for the ladies. So at some point, you're going to have to come out of your comfort zone if you're a shy person and say, I got to go for this person. Uh One thing Kristen always used to say, and I think her brother told her this at one point, is that yeah, those can be some awkward moments and awkward conversations. And yeah, you're out of your comfort zone and all of that. But once you're done with that conversation, you're done with that conversation. Either it went well and you go out with this person or it didn't, but you don't have to wonder anymore. But if you stay in this what if place, that will stick with you a really long time. Because oh, yeah. you don't get closure to that. If you don't, so. if you don't get out of your comfort zone, at least that one initial time, mm-hmm. then it's going to eat you alive. Yeah. I know that from experience. <laughs> yeah. I've done it before where there was some sort of chemistry that was noticeable <laughs> and I didn't do anything and ultimately came back and find out, well, they moved on. Yeah. Which is very unfortunate. Right. So at some point you're going to have to come out of your comfort uh-huh. zone, which I'm sure is probably not the answer you wanted necessarily, <laughs> but maybe it's the appropriate kick in the pants that says, mm-hmm. just do it. Yeah. Just go for it. Do it, do it according to your personality. Yes. That doesn't mean that you have to start pretending like you're a bubbly person. Being shy can be endearing. Oh, Especially if sure. you're two shy people. So the other person's going to understand you. Mm-hmm. Be yourself in that. And if you're awkward, you're awkward. Hopefully one day you're looking back on it and you have a good laugh about yeah, it. Yeah, you're like, oh, remember when? One thing you can do too, and this is in any, for me, like most awkward dating scenarios or conversations or things you find yourself in as far as like early dates or whatever acknowledge that it's awkward Mm -hmm. because i can almost guarantee you the other person feels awkward too and they don't know what to say and it's whatever if you just acknowledge oh my word this is so awkward um or wow i just made that awkward or just joke about it oh i always make jokes about it it puts everyone at ease i always i always uh joke at the beginning of the conversation right all right Let's do this thing. Let's have an awkward conversation. (laughs) 
Some of that effect or get ready for the awkward first date questions. Yeah. Just laugh about it. It definitely breaks the ice and is definitely endearing. So, okay. I think we have answered that. From good question. A good, yeah, good several perspectives. So next question, and this one is kind of longer, but it's a, the point that she gets at is a good one. And I would, I'm really interested to hear from a guy's perspective, what your thoughts are on this. So she's saying she's recently started dating this guy. So the dates themselves are go- going well. And he usually plans for the next one before they leave. Um, and I'll summarize the middle part here. Basically he's very involved in his church. I can't tell if he's on staff there or not. Um, so he's very busy on Saturdays and Sundays with rehearsals getting ready. And then also on Sunday for church. Um, but he also lives a decent way away to where the only times they can really see each other are on Saturday and Sunday. So, um, she said the most recent time he, they had plans. He was going to come pick her up for dinner. But then last minute, he was like, oh, I'm still at the church talking to my pastor. Just go ahead and head over to the restaurant. Um, I'll meet you there. Her question is, I can't tell if he's just really putting the Lord first and if this is actually a good thing or if it's a lack of pursuit and he's not that interested. Like, like, and we get a lot of questions of guys doing X, Y, Z. I can't tell if he's busy or if he's not interested or he's not prioritizing this or whatever. And it's a tough thing to know. Yeah. Hmm. As somebody in ministry, mm-hmm. uh, I can attest to ministry schedules are very fluid. Yeah. They change constantly. And unfortunately, not with a ton of lead time most most of the no, times. No, <laughs> I mean, I had invitations to ball games for some of my students or kids and invitations to plays, and they always come in last minute. And then there's that internal war of do I go, do I not go, is this last minute, do I have time for this? Because time gets eaten up quick in ministry. Um, so that's definitely a challenge. Um, it does seem like there is a commitment to the Lord. So I'm not going to question the integrity on that part. Sure. Of because he's giving a lot of time to the church. That's one of the things that, looking back on it, I had a conversation with um, a dear, dear friend of mine several years ago when we lived together. He was talking about how one of the things that he was afraid of as a single guy, this is when he was single, Mm -hmm. is going into the ministry knowing that he would get in a rhythm of devoting his entire life to the ministry, and it would be really hard to break. Ooh. So he actually ended up, whether intentionally or not, not going into ministry until after he was married and had a couple of kids, and got into a rhythm with with his family. And then now that he's jumped into ministry, it's been beneficial because ministry has demanded a lot of his time, and he's, he's already learned how to say no so he can minister to his family. That's really smart um, or wise. So I'm I'm on the flip side. Uh-huh. I went to ministry as a single guy and devoted a lot of my time to the ministry. And it has had some adverse consequences of I've been so devoted to the ministry that there have been some instances where I've said no to things in relationships that looking back I probably shouldn't have mm-hmm. and should have said no to that particular ministry. Because it was just a smart thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there have been times, even just since I've known you, that you've just said no to even the potential of something. Yeah. Like, just flat out, no no real reason, you know, nothing against her, the girl, just, mm-hmm. just, I can't right now. Which, yeah, I mean, you have to kind of pick and choose there, and it's tough. Um, so, I, I do, I like, I want to give this guy credit. Sure. Don't know him, don't know his situation, don't know his heart, but based upon what I hear... Yeah, and I, she's I, not speaking poorly of him either. Yeah. She's saying it, it's a good thing. Yeah, I get the pressure and the difficulty. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also understand, we've talked about this before, as somebody that works at a church, the challenge of letting certain people know when relationships are going on, you, you don't want to do that because people get way too involved way yeah. too quickly. So that could be something else is playing a factor. True. Uh, he's not trying to tip his hand very much to a lot of people, and mm-hmm. that has... The consequence of when he tries to say no to things, he has to give a reason. Mm. Um, so, and it just could be difficult there. Yeah. With trying to hold his cards close to his vest. That's true. Okay, so, there's so that side of it. One caveat, let me add, because I missed this in the first reading of it. She p- puts in here, he doesn't really text during the week either. So, does that shift your thoughts at all? Because it kind of would for me. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, this is one of those situations I can't speak to somebody's heart. 
So sure. I can't I can't say based upon just this question, this is what they're doing. What I would want to say in this situation is you gotta give somewhere. Yeah. Right. So if you if you want to make it work, you gotta give. I wonder if this is a person that I talked to at one point. Uh, that's hilarious. No. It's all joking aside. Um, you do have to give somewhere. Whether it's okay, I'm gonna talk more during the week because I don't have weekends, or I'm gonna have to start guarding my weekends a little bit more so that I can give time mm. here. Yeah, I think my overall, kind of going to what you're saying, is it doesn't sound like anyone's heart is in the wrong place, really, from what what she has described. Um, as a girl, though, I would tell her, look, he may be really interested in you, and he may be doing his best to prioritize this, and it's just that those other things are more important right now than mm. a relationship, even if he really likes you. And that's okay in the sense of that's something that he's really pursuing, and it's a good thing to pursue so even if you do like him and he does really seem to like you, it's okay to put an end to it if you need to, mm. even if you both like each other. Because you don't want to be sitting on the other side of it going, they don't have any time to give to me. I'm not a priority at all. You don't want to feel like that. Right. Even if it's they're giving their time to really good and noble things, mm -hmm. you're not being selfish and saying, I still want to feel like a one of his priorities. At a certain point, those priorities have to shift. Yeah. They have to kind of start changing or you're going to get to marriage and still feel second fiddle in yeah. your husband's and, life. And that's, and that's really problematic. Well, it's the opposite of what it's supposed to be. Exactly. Because in, in marriage, your primary ministry is to your wife and family exactly. as a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, so that dynamic is supposed to change. And I mean, look, I get the guy's issues. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand his struggle. <laughs> A ton, because I, I really have. I've said no to relationships before because of the burdens that I had in ministry, mm -hmm. which really sucks because I'm just kicking something down the road that would bring some happiness and joy to my life. <laughs> yeah. But I've had to because I also didn't want them to feel those burdens and pressures. So it's a really hard line that he's walking. But on the girl side of things, I would say you're not wrong for wanting to feel like a priority. Yeah. Oh and yeah, don't feel and, selfish in that. And I've I have ended things not in this specific like scenario, but I've ended things with guys before where it's like, okay, you're a great guy, we get along, things are good. There are some things you need to work on, and maybe this thing is really figuring out how to prioritize things. Mm -hmm. And I've told guys before, I, I need to let you go figure that out on your own, and because you don't have to feel like the guinea pig. You don't have to be the test subject while he's figuring that yes, out. Yes, I do want to say, though, don't just drop the bomb. No, there, have conversations. Have a couple of conversations about this, and if there's no real change, then, okay, it's time to move on. Yes. I just want to say that because you if went from zero to 60 real quick. I Yes, and in my situation, there were, yes, I'm glad you said there were multiple conversations that happened and lead up, and it was not an out-of-the-blue thing. And honestly, you know, if you guys have just kind of really recently started dating and you're wondering, is this guy prioritizing me? He may have never been in a situation where that's come up before. No one may have. I mean, it may be the kind of thing where you have a conversation. He's like, oh, my word. I am so sorry. I had no idea that's how that was coming across. You're really important to me. Let me change this. And then poof, it's good. Or it may not. But I think it's in a, a place where you can't expect a guy to read your mind. And this may be one of those things where it's like, okay, we've gone from, oh, we're just kind of casually dating a little, but we're having a good time to, is this going to move forward or not? Yeah, I would say hope the best, but think with a clear head. Good way of putting that. Yes, which is slightly more optimistic than prepare for the worst. I don't like that part. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hope for the best and just think sober-mindedly. Yeah, there you go. I That's good. Perfect. Follow the scriptural precedent here. Okay, fine. Be more spiritual than I am. Good question. <laughs> um, okay, so this one, I'm also, I like I like being in charge of this because I can get the guy's perspective on all these things. So I'm kind of liking the not prepared <laughs> rapid fire here. Okay, well then let's keep going. Is it a sign a guy likes you when he frequently teases you? And why do guys tease? Because. What do we mean by tease? That's literally all it says. I don't uh, know. Okay. What are your assumptions? Um, that he just picks on her all the time. Uh, I think part of it is because it's how we're hardwired. Uh -huh. And if you think the teasing is bad to you, you should see how he interacts with his guy friends. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, look. Uh, unmarried guys are untrained. It sounds stupid, but it's true. We are untrained. We are <laughs> not how 
housebroken. We are not housebroken. <laughs> We are like a wild Labradoodle puppy. Not Labradoodle. I don't like Labradoodle. Lab- Labrador. Just straight lab, Labrador. Yeah, lab puppies. Just straight black labs. Those are the best. I used to have one and Aww. it was wild. I want a black lab. Um, we, we, are, we are not house trained. <laughs> so in terms of interactions, we're not the best at it because we're used to our guy interactions. Okay. So. That's fair. We, we can be sarcastic and that is how we have learned to show affection to other guys. And so, some reason, it translates over. Don't know why we yeah. do what we do, but we Oh, girls do. like it. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. I don't know. I, it's not a matter of not liking it. It's a matter of, does this mean he's interested? Because here's the thing. Some guys tease when they're interested. Some guys just tease everybody. So, my yes. answer is always, does he treat everyone with the behavior that is questionable in your mind of, does he like me? Or is he singling you out? And That's I, what differentiates. I wouldn't it to say me. does he just tease me because he's gonna probably if he's a guy he's gonna tease everyone. That's just natural uh, to to some degree okay. and extent. Yeah, guys mess with other people. It's just what we do. Yeah, but but is it the same level? Yeah. Well, and okay, even then too. And I hope we're not talking about like elementary school pulling girls' hair at water. No, no, no. I think it's a. I think some guys do like. Here's how I have perceived it in the past as a girl. You can tell me if I'm off base or not. Um, guys joke around with their guy friends a ton. If you're in a group, but if a guy is interested, he doesn't tease all of the girls the same way he does the girl he's interested in. Oh, 100%. So I'm just saying that's the that's the perception, probably the question that's coming through. Also... Do, and this is, I'm genuinely asking you, she didn't now. Do guys do that in an, because it comes across as this effort to like, not stake your claim. That's not what, that's not the sentiment I mean, but more of a kind of letting everyone know, hey, I know that like, I have a leg up. I know this girl, like kind of separating it, putting it, a, putting a different level to it. Or is that girls overthinking it? Because I'm, we've like, girls talk about that. So I'm genuinely asking no, because okay. like in the guy world, you tell your buddies, "I like that girl." Well, they back off. Okay. I mean, I I remember in college, I had a friend of mine that came out and very publicly said he liked a girl that I liked but hadn't said anything. And I was like, "Well, beat me to the punch. <laughs> Go for it." Okay. Didn't work out. Worked out for me for a little while. Okay. So, you no. Know, okay. I'm genuinely yeah, this asking. This isn't the animal kingdom where we're marking our territory. No, no, no. And I, I knew I shouldn't have said take your claim. I knew that wasn't the, I don't know. I mean, I think it happens to make people know. Okay. Just in general, though. Yeah. Not just other guys, like, staking your claim. Yeah. you said it, and I'm going to use it. I know. Because <laughs> um, I think that that's probably too far. I think it's more of just putting it out there. Okay. And that's just, that's genuinely how we show affection. Don't know okay. why this is what we do, but this is what we do. Totally. That's I don't understand men answer. either. <laughs> okay. I just know what we do. Okay. So then going to. Good question. This actually. I want people to feel like they have good questions. It was just funny. Your face, you're like, good question. You're so serious. Okay. So you were talking about um, guy, you, you, the situation you were in, you liked a girl, other guy said he liked her and you're like, okay more power to you kind of thing like step aside which actually goes into a question another question i wanted to oh, ask sweet. about of there we have girl a and girl b oh boy girl a is interested in boy a um there's only one boy girl a is interested um has recently started to catch feelings in her words um problem is her good friend also likes him and it would appear that those two the guy and then her friend talked about it neither of them were ready to pursue a relationship whatever just be friends but they both kind of liked each other the girl still really likes the guy but now the friend likes him too in that scenario does like if no one has they the one pair talked about it but in these scenarios where two girls like a guy two guys like a girl and no one has said anything to anyone do you owe your friend any sort of oh well they like him too i need to step back I can't speak from the girl's side. Okay, talk uh, about from the guy's side. I mean, in in the specific scenario that I mentioned, I didn't say anything. 
Okay. So, I mean, it's kind of sucks for you. You didn't say anything. That guy said something, so yeah. I'm going to back off. I mean, that's just kind of the way that I operate. If I didn't do something yeah. and they're going to do something, they probably deserve it more. That's fair. Um, but it, this is a weird and tangled love triangle here. But c- because then I want to ask, has there been any signs from the guy reciprocating to girl B? It would not seem so. And in this specific scenario, I would say the best thing to do is just really try to put it all out of your head because he's not ready for a relationship. You was, he established that with a yeah. friend, like, and it was a, across the board. Um, and so I think in this specific instance, the best thing to do is just to take those thoughts captive, not feed it and kind of get over this thing before it becomes something that could be really hurtful needlessly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different um, scenarios that could trans, not transform that could come off of this branch yeah. off. That's yeah, yeah, more yeah. What I want. because it could be a situation where, Guy liked girl. Guy was ready. She wasn't. She said, wait. And he waited for a while and kind of yeah. got over it. And then, yeah, as a friend, you're fine going for it. Right. Um, if you have a conversation with your friend. You should always have a conversation with your friend. <laughs> if you're aware of something, Don't act like it is not. not worth backstabbing. Uh, yes, Don't agree do 100%. That. Um, but if they were both, yeah, we agree. We're not ready for a relationship. Why is he suddenly ready for you? Yeah. And it's, that's just not how that works. Yes. And then I have... One other thought kind of going with that. Okay, so my thought kind of takes a little bit of a different flair to this story. Let's take out of it that the one girl and the guy had already talked to each other. Take it out. I forgot about it already. (laughs) So let's talk about the scenario where two girls like the same guy and no one has ever said anything to anyone. And the guy hasn't necessarily shown that he's interested in either one of you. Um, I don't know if guys do this, but from the girl's side, we like to um, like make it be known that we like the guy to kind of dibs it. And then just in case he might somehow be interested, we're going to take everyone else off the table because we said something first when no one has ever shown any interest, which I just don't think is fair. And so I'm saying to the girls listening, if that's the situation you find yourself in, um, that's not cool. Because if the guy does end up being interested in one of your friends, you've put her in a really awkward position of feeling like she's a bad friend for liking this guy when in reality you had no claim on him whatsoever. Okay, see, that's the funny thing about this whole scenario that I was talking about. Uh-huh. Because a buddy of mine uh, said he liked this girl, and I did as well, but I didn't uh-huh. say anything. So I was like, well, okay, you, you shoot your shot. Exactly. He shot a shot. She said no because she was interested in me. <laughs> and then we went out. Yeah. And he married her best friend. Like, Whoa. Yeah. I mean, Plot twist. pretty quickly afterwards. So on the guy's side of things, we really don't care. Yeah. Shoot your shot. Next man up mentality. Yep. So if it doesn't work up, work up, work, work out. out. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, you, yeah. and you find out you have another friend, you got to go for it. I mean, who, who cares? Yeah. I think, uh, well, I think that goes to the point of girls get way too far ahead of things in their mind because it's not just, eh, didn't work out, moving on, next person. It's, I was going to marry that guy, and now my best friend is moving in on the guy that I was planning to marry. Here's the thing. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what happens. It's not that we're just, we're not giving it much thought because we're lazy. Yeah. It's because it actually doesn't matter that much. Mm. Just a little reality check there. It's fair. Yeah. Yeah, because it hasn't got to a point where it should matter. No. Yeah, that's, what, that's kind of what I mean. Yeah. You, you can't mentally marry someone and then get mad when somebody else no. goes in on your quote-unquote territory when it wasn't your territory It wasn't yours to start with, yeah. Like, I get it. If you were dating the guy and all of a sudden you had another French show interest, okay, then we're in a different <laughs> yeah. world it's like a because hello. you were walled up and secured and they blew up the wall. That's a different story. Yeah. But if there's no clear boundaries and you haven't said a word, stop it. Mm-hmm. Just stop it. But that Agreed. wasn't the original part of the question. It wasn't. I just that was to, your area. Yeah, that was me. Yes. So, yeah. I just want to specify original that I wasn't. Original question asker, that last part was not aimed at you. I was not I was not firing back at our listener <laughs> no. because they asked a good question. They did ask a good question. Okay, let's do a really fun one here. Or at least I, I think, think it's fun. I think the last one's going to be fun. Well, you'll see what I mean. Oh, More okay. lighthearted? I don't know. Would you ever date someone who had either, one, the same name as your ex or the same name as your sibling? Is this person asking me out? No. Oh, you said it if I would. So well, that's the question. Um, oh, stop it. <laughs> no no to the sibling, yes to an ex. Yeah, same. Uh, it's pretty straightforward for me. I mean, it's a little weird with my sister. Um, yeah, I just can't, cannot do that one. Yeah. Be strange. 
Strange Fire family too, because mm-hmm. you've got. Uh, I, I have some extended family that my uncle and his son have the same name. Yeah. His father has the same name. And then there was a guy that married into the family with the same name. And it's very confusing. Too much. And going and being with their side of the family, if uh-huh. I say their name, everyone looks at me and I'm like, okay, I want that one. I can't even specify and give <laughs> yeah. older or younger because some of them are older and some of them are younger. So I have to point yeah. at them and it's really obnoxious. So yeah. no to the sibling. The exes are fine, depending on how it ended. Fair. If it ended really just in a nasty breakup, uh-huh. probably not. That would be tough. Uh, Unless they were just a great person, and I'm like, okay, well, uh, who cares? Yeah, point? the X thing doesn't bother me. What's in a name? <laughs> Don't get philosophical <laughs> on me. A rose by any na- other name would smell as sweet. Um, it's not philosophical. That's Shakespearean. Okay, fine. If Shakespeare was being philosophical. Um, no, I think the X thing is fine. Kind of same thing. If it ended horribly. Maybe not, but once you're over it, that's not a big deal to me. Siblings, um, I talk. You know, my dad's name is Jeff. Talked to a guy. It didn't last very long. Because you couldn't get past this, that. Because his name was Jeff, and I was like, can't do it. Just call cannot him. Just do it. called him uh, Hefe. <laughs> so, I couldn't do it. Like that. Yeah, that was just too weird. Like I'm gonna have to call you Jeffrey. That is the only way we're getting past it. Yeah. What's your middle name? Can you be like JM or JR or JT or something? Just pick something different. You cannot be Jeff. <laughs> yeah. So, no. I uh, I agree with you on that one. It is too weird if it's, yeah, sibling, parent. Even, I don't know. Good question. Yeah. That, <laughs> 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 oh, that is really funny. Okay. Uh, I'm just scrolling here. I'm trying to find. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Another one. Bethany, keep scrolling. <laughs> I'm sitting right oh, under an air vent, and it's really cold. Here's one from a guy, and I I find this one interesting. Uh, he says, would girls be interested in dating expats? I just moved to the U.S. for at least four years, two months ago, from the Netherlands, and I've met a girl I really like. Not sure she would even consider me as an option since I'm not from around here. What kind of things would girls be considered? Would girls be considering when someone asks them out? What was it? Considering dating what? An expat. Huh? <laughs> like, is it expatriate? Is that the the word? Like someone who lives outside of their country? Oh. I think that's what it's short for, but it's like, yeah, someone who's currently living outside of their own country. So if, like if you went and lived in Italy for a year, you would I be I didn't know expat. that's what you called it. That is what it's called. So this guy's from the Netherlands. He's oh. moved to the U.S. for four years. And What's he the question? Sorry, know... I was still trying to figure out what that word is. <laughs> I lost you back at the beginning. Uh-huh. He basically wants to know is would girls even consider that? Um, and what kinds of things would they be thinking about if a guy were to ask him out who's not from their country? Um, and he says, are Christian girls in the U.S. in general open to dating non-Americans? I think so. I feel like that's not my one thing I would want to know. Like he says he's li- moving here for at least four years. I'd be good with that. Um it was like for three or four months, probably wouldn't necessarily want to get involved with something, but that's just, it's not because he's from somewhere else. It's just a matter of time. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if you're here for a certain amount of time, tell them that and see if they're cool with leaving, because if not, then you don't have anywhere to go. But I don't see anything wrong with that. Like, I mean, I think he's just asking in general, are girls open to that? And I would say, yeah, they are. I mean, I'm not a girl, so I don't know, know. but I would assume yes. Yeah, I think I mean, it's fine. The t- I'm from around here, but I act like I'm not from around here. You're literally from two states away. That's no, 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 very no, no. different. No, what? From Kentucky? No, I was just acting like I act like I'm not from this world because I'm so oh, strange. Oh, well, yeah, but that's a whole, that's a different question. Yeah, I'm, um, a, I'm a tough nut to crack. <laughs> I think the two things that would need to be communicated up front are, one, make sure she knows how long you're going to be here. Yes. Um, in this case, at least four years you would be dating, engaged, married, and married for a while, I would think, in a four-year time span if you started dating this girl now. So then the second thing that needs to be clearly communicated, but not at the start, it's like, okay, you start dating. Quickly, I would get to a place of, if you're if you were enjoying getting to know this girl and you're enjoying dating and it's moving somewhere, you got to talk about, okay, are you definitely going back to your country in four years? Are you definitely leaving this country in four years? Two years? Like, what do those parameters look like? Because if she is adamant against 
moving out of the U.S. and you are adamant about going back home, you're probably going to end up with some uh, tough things to work through, if not deal breakers. Yeah, I, I would say make sure your life plans match up. Yep. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. is just make sure your life plans match up and then go for it. But, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to speak directly to this guy uh, because I've known some uh, foreign exchange students from where he is from. Uh -huh. They have a leg up on us. Mm. For some reason, I have noticed that uh, girls – are much faster attracted, especially if you're someone with an accent. And a southern accent doesn't really count. I don't know. I mean, it's not worked out well for me, but okay. Um, <laughs> you don't have that much of an accent. It depends on the day That's and what fair. I'm doing. That's if I'm fair. hunting and fishing, oh, it is out there <laughs> for the world to see. Uh, you you got a leg up on the crowd already, so use that to your advantage. There is an, an intrigue. With to great power the comes great responsibility. <laughs> Okay, that's really funny. Okay, I am trying to find one more good question. One more good question. That one's really long. Let's see here. I'm just going to sing everything. Have you ever seen <laughs> uh, Hoodwinked? Animated movie? Yeah. Yeah? There's a, uh, a crazy mountain goat that says he's cursed by a witch and has to sing everything. <laughs> what if that was me? <gasps> oh, I remember that. And there's like the roller coaster thing. That is hilarious. I do remember that. The first time I watched it is that. so funny. It had me in stitches. <laughs> oh. Be prepared. Let's Would you hurry up? Here. I'm I trying to filibuster so over here sorry. and it's not I working. I know. I'm trying to find a good one. And poor Bethany. I've been sitting over here playing with a tennis ball the entire time. Uh, you know what's funny? I have to sit and fidget. But yeah. I I hate fidget spinners. Oh, here's a here's a good one. Go for it. Okay, and this one's gonna end on a probably a little bit more of a serious note. Ooh, I like serious. So let me read the question. It's short, but then I'll fill in where I want to go with this. I'm sorry, I'm seriously sitting that, under that very Arctic tundra air. I'm moving. Okay, you sorry move. for the chair Whatever noises noise you hear. in the background because okay. I'm freezing. Oh my goodness, it's so <laughs> it's much so warmer much better, over here. Like, 12 inches to the side. Wow. Okay. So this girl says, why do I feel crazy for liking a guy? It you feels are. wrong. Hush. <laughs> he did not mean that. He's just being snarky. He said, it feels wrong. Or he's now you got me all confused. She said, <laughs> <laughs> you got me all turned up. She said, it feels wrong for me to like anyone. And this struck me because I was just having a conversation with someone not too long ago about just the way the church and Christian culture carries on conversations about liking people and dating and all of those things. And we were talking about just how taking a good concept of protecting yourself in dating relationships and striving for purity and wanting those things is good. It can be taken to an unhealthy level of you end up feeling, yeah, it feels wrong for me to even like someone. And I don't know if I'm reading into this question. It just went into the, the conversation I was having of why do I feel crazy for liking a guy? I, I, I get that. I've had people ask those things before of like, oh, well, I really like this guy and I really want to spend time with him and I find him attractive and I really like hanging out with him. But now I feel like that's wrong because it should all be all about like your Christian faith. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I don't know if I've ever experienced that side of it. Mm -hmm. um, because if I like someone, I like them. Yep. End of story. Um, not necessarily on the angle of, well, I just need to be focusing on my walk with the Lord, because that's always a priority. Yeah. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, though, which sometimes I think they're almost viewed as if they are. Fair. But I, I, I have felt bad about it. Um... I don't know, in, in seasons where a lot was asked of me mm. in terms of ministering to other people. It's like we talked about this at the very beginning. I felt guilty when I'm interested in someone and I know a, either A, I don't have to get the time to give them that they deserve. And I want to emphasize that they deserve mm -hmm. because every woman is fearfully and wonderfully made. Every man is as well. But I want to specify that. For this listener in particular, um, don't feel bad or don't feel crazy because you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and we can just stop right there. I mean, mm -hmm. you are a creature created in the image of the Most High God. So don't ever feel mm. inferior and down on yourself for any reason. Let's just, uh, and I will Full put stop. a dead stop there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of liking someone, don't feel crazy because it was a desire that God has given you. 
Right, so we were we were desired, not desired, made to desire yeah. marriage. Now, there are some people that have the gift of singleness, very rare, very, very rare. And I think we throw it out very casually in the church, and I have only seen it on a handful of occasions. I think we throw it out as a consolation. And it's not? Because it's a, oh, well, you're older. Well, maybe you just, you know, singleness is not all bad. You might have the gift of singleness, like maybe, whatever. And I'm like, no, that's not helpful. Yeah, the um, you'll know you have the gift of singleness if you know you have it. If you don't, yeah, you're not going to be desiring marriage like you would otherwise. Like it, it will, won't be a desire that you have that strongly. But if you have a desire to date someone and you have a desire to get married, odds are you don't. Exactly. That's yeah. So I'm exactly. going to throw that one already out mm-hmm. and say that you were made for that desire, and it is a good desire. God declared it to be so. So don't feel bad, don't feel crazy for liking someone because you have a desire to be married. Mm -hmm. Because you're just falling in line with what God has designed you for. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other conversations that we can have because too much of a good thing is an idol. Yep. So if it's becoming an idol in your life where it's starting to have an impact on your dating relationship, now you have a problem. Yep. But if it's a, man, I really, they love the Lord, they cute. They're fun to be around. We have good conversations. That's a good thing. Yeah. Go for it. It's a blessing and it's a gift. So see it as that. And don't feel bad for that just because the church has done a poor job of instructing and leading people to knowing what biblical dating is. Yes. Exactly. No, that's really, yeah. I was going to say, it's very rare when you just agree with me and don't say anything No, else. that's really exactly where I was thinking, the the um, the direction I was thinking of. Don't let, yeah, the maybe the poor handling of, of the situation by the church, by people in your life, by well-meaning Christians. Don't let them warp a desire that God has given you that is good. You're just responsible for making sure that it is not something that is disproportionate in the priorities of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think you, and that's just really reiterating what you said. I think you, uh, pretty much spot on. You know, what's wild. What is wild? This is the second full season under my belt now. Wow. Oh my word. That is weird. We are two full seasons into this new crazy nonsense that is having me on the show. <laughs> that is weird. And it's funny because like I remember the first time. So, the first time I was on with you and Kristen, yeah. I was slightly nervous. I was like, this is just an interview. That's no big deal. <laughs> first time it was just the two of us. I was like, I was nervous. Because I didn't even have my podcast yeah. voice and knowing how to do a mic conversation. Now I'm just me. You get used to um, it, yeah. So, I was still trying to get used to that in the beginning. And then I was still trying to be super structured and pointed <laughs> with everything. And then I just kind of settled into Forget it. <laughs> letting, letting this show reflect me. Mm-hmm. But also... People, you just get a behind-the-scenes look of what happens when I walk into Bethany's office. Yes. Because I'll walk in and go, story time. Story time. And what that means is I have a story and I want a conversation, and it's just a fun, casual conversation. So every episode is that behind-the-scenes look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you've gone from, I think, trying to fit into the existing looking-for-the-middle mold or feeling like you had to, to, okay, now we kind of have our our own mold or groove or whatever a little bit better. And it's a lot of fun. And I'll oh, tell yeah. you, we have had so much wonderful feedback that's just been so encouraging Yeah, that it's made this even more fun. It is really fun. Now, this season has had its challenges. We haven't been able to do everything we wanted to, Mm-mm. partially because the back end of it, I was sick so much and yeah. just some other stuff going on. But I'll tell you, it's still been a fun season. It has been a fun season. And the good news with that is because we didn't get to everything we wanted to do this season, Next season is already uh, halfway through planning, ish. We got a we got a lot in the tank. We, we do have a lot in the tank, and and we might have to slip out. Uh, I'm sure an episode or two this summer. I am sure you will hear from us. Any now any break and from us August is no real September. break. <laughs> yes. So thank you for being here, guys. We have enjoyed it. We will be back for sure next season, August ish. We'll keep you posted on an exact date once we get closer to that. Um, And yeah, you probably will hear from us over the summer as well. But until then, I'm Bethany. And I'm Dalton. And this is Looking for the Middle.